stopping Penn West, asking them to leave. On Friday, January 3rd, in Alberta, Canada, Indigenous protesters filed a notice of appeal against Penn West Petroleum in their continued fight against hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Last month, a judge's injunction order against members of Lubicon Lake Nation shut down their three-week-long blockade, which began in late November 2013, on a drilling site of the oil and gas giant. They just kind of went ahead and, and ordered this really broad order that has um, implications for our rights. The Real News spoke to Lubicon Land and Negotiations advisor Cynthia Tomlinson, who said that the community's anti-fracking protests are far from over. And discussions around what to do next. Um, they've been continuing on and on. Uh, there's there's no way that they're going to stop, but they are, they're just trying to find other ways and other things that they can do to um, get their point across. Some of the things that they've discussed is uh, rallies, um, looking at other industry players in our area. That there's there's a few of them that are that have permission from the Alberta government to, um, ex- to to develop the area. Penn West has been actively engaging in fracking projects on what the community considers to be traditional Lubicon Cree land. The extraction process injects millions of gallons of water, chemicals and sand into shale and rock formations at high pressures to help draw out fuel. The land on which this fracking activity occurs has been subject to heated dispute as Lubicon First Nation has never signed it away to the Canadian government. The energy industry maintains that in addition to contributing immense economic growth and job creation in Canada, that fracking does not pose health and environmental hazards as opponents claim. Supporters of fracking have argued that protesters are exaggerating the hazards of the process, and they attempt to reinforce the idea that fracking is a relatively straightforward combination of two pre-existing technologies. The liquid used in fracking is around 99% water and sand, with a smattering of fairly common chemicals. While some claim that fracking poses a risk to groundwater, experience suggests that those risks are very low. Though specifics about the fracking chemicals used remain as industry secrets, their dangers to the environment and communities surrounding drilling sites have been well documented. And despite competing data on fracking and energy development projects, including tar sands, Indigenous communities maintain that industrial practices are taking a concrete toll on their health. What we're seeing happening to the communities around these projects are elevated rates of cancers um, as well as elevated rates of respiratory illnesses like emphysema and asthma because there's air quality issues, there's contamination to the water, um, destruction and complete fragmentation of the boreal forest which is one of the last remaining intact forests in the world. We've had lung cancers, we've had uh, stomach cancers, uh, ovarian cancer. Like there's all these different types of cancer that, uh, again, it's not something that we've seen in this community previously, and we don't have any explanation as to why we're seeing them now. All we know is that we're seeing them now, and we have all this development that's happening simultaneously. Penn West has drilled 60 wells in the area of Hag Lake alone, which is sacred for the Indigenous community. Those wells are among the 2,600 oil and gas wells leased to corporations by Alberta. The province owns 69,000 shares in Penn West, which the Nasdaq Stock Exchange values at nearly $600,000. I think it's $14 billion in, in resources has been extracted out of the Lubicon Territory. The Alberta government benefits, the, the royalties that they get, plus the, the shares they own in Penn West. Um, Penn West benefits by taking the oil, selling it, and then keeping the money. The areas of Hag, Swan, and Buffalo Lake in northern Alberta have been subject to a shale exploration program in which Penn West has invested around $95 million. According to their year-end financial report, the company saw gross revenues of $773 million in 2013. Two days prior to the recent injunction, the Lubicon community experienced a short-lived victory when a Calgary judge ruled in favour of the First Nation protesters, allowing them to continue their blockade. Rare as the favourable ruling may have been, it afforded the community just an additional weekend of protest. While Penn West asked for a week-long injunction against the demonstrators, the judge granted one of six months. The community came back that night. Once we heard the news, um, they're quite angry about it. This is our home. This is our land, and we're not going anywhere. How is it that 
Penn West asks for seven days, and the judge says, well, seven days is too little, let's give you six months. The immense corporate and governmental profit off of Lubicon territory is an important aspect of the community's continued resistance. For more than 60 years, the Lubicon Lake Nation has struggled for recognition of their land rights in Alberta. In 1939, they were promised a reserve and still remain without a land rights settlement. Well, the, the history of our, our nation is... It's quite unique. Um, there's not many in Canada that have the same history. I mean, the Treaty 8, we're in the Treaty 8 um, area, but we haven't signed on to Treaty 8. Uh, in the 1930s, they, we were told, okay, you guys are a distinct separate group. You guys are going to get a reserve. Um, like This has been going on for many, many years. For the most part, the community is still the same. And we see the benefit that, that oil companies get, um, the companies that come and go while the community itself doesn't really benefit. How is it that they can benefit? We don't. When we try to stand up for ourselves, they say, well, no, you can't stand up for yourself. We're just going to come and take, take your resources, destroy your land, and we're going to go. You know, there may not that be that many people here, but we're still people, and we still have rights. Today, energy policy under Stephen Harper's Conservative government, which has been committed to expanding the production of fossil fuel energy, exacerbates impacts on Lubicon and First Nation communities throughout Canada. We, we definitely feel the effect of Harper's policy. I mean, we, we watched when he got elected and we watched everything that transpired from, from then on. So we were quite worried about what was that, what was that going to do with our... Um, title to the land and the fact that we haven't signed treaty, how is that all going to relate when their main goal is to extract, extract, extract? If anyone dares question, you know, the Harper government or whatever their native policy is or the, the bills that, that they've passed, um, it doesn't seem like they're willing to listen to anyone. The community itself is still very much um, in third world conditions. There's housing problems, there's um, mold in our school, there's so much wrong in the community that it's time that it, there, there needs to be a change. For The Real News Network, Shara Tajvidi.